This NFL Picks Week 14 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a $1,000 risk free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is DFS simplified. All you have to do is pick your favorite player over and under to cash in. Head over to prizepicks.com and use promo code SGP for a 100% instant deposit match. We're also brought to you by Better Fantasy. Better Fantasy is a new free to play app that lets you sync your fantasy football league and bet on the head to head matchups. Download the app today or just head to betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. That's betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by SoBet. Sign up to bet against your friends and join the social betting revolution at SoBet.io slash SGPN. That's SoBet.io slash SGPN. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new propswap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Week 14, Sean. It sounds awfully close to week 18. I'm starting to get worried. Mm. I'm st- I'm starting to get worried that football season's almost it, not it here. It is. It is weird because we have the uh, the Eagles are on the late buy. We have these uh, you know week 14 buys. So, you know, in my head, it's still like, oh, you got half the season left after your bye week. Of course, Mm-mm. that's not the case, but we do have the NFL playoffs and God, and God bless the NFL. Salute you, Roger Goodell. Never made a bad decision in your life. The, adding the seventh team, A, keeps everyone around. Again, as a fan, all I want is when they show that graphic at least to be in the hunt. No, Sean, what the fans want is a four team playoff. Just four, four <laughs> out of a hundred and forty. Yeah, just to be in the hunt. Come, uh, you know, Christmas trees up in the hunt graphic. That's all I'm looking for as a fan. Mission accomplished. And then, you know, wild card weekend. You get uh, what is it? Two games Saturday, three games Sunday, and then the bonus game on Monday night. We're gonna have a Monday night playoff game. Are you kidding me? Uh, this is going to be hard to explain to the fam. I, I'm assuming uh, Roger has some sort of uh, talking points that you can bring home for yes. the wife. A little hey, cheat sheet. Maybe he can work. Hi, welcome to Wild Card Weekend, where you <laughs> won't be seeing your loved one. <laughs> maybe he can work something out with the uh, retail industry to get like a big uh, a Black Friday 2.0. Oh yeah. Get the uh, you know get the ladies out not noticing things. Maybe a national holiday that Monday. Can Ooh. we call it Wild Card? Well, and and we probably have to address this. Start planning now, gentlemen. And uh, I say, gentlemen, there there are some uh, ladies listeners. More and more uh, women are listening to Sports Gambling Podcast. You should also know this as well. The Super Bowl is February thirteenth. Oh, I no. know what you're thinking. Wow, that's that seems like a date I should. Oh wait, February fourteenth. That's right. The the Monday after the Super Bowl is Valentine's Day. So heads up, warning, have your shit together because you can't be a complete. Well, you you you're going to be a hungover uh, mess come Monday. You just have set your plans now because oh. your brain's going to be thinking Super Bowl. You don't realize the extra week of games is colliding with the Valentine's day. So just giving everyone a fair warning and and we'll make sure to uh, put it in the, maybe in the pre-rolls for the uh, gap between the uh, conference championships and super bowl. We'll put constant reminders out there because you want to make sure you lock that stuff down before super bowl Sunday. Yes. Last thing you need is coming home down a bunch of money 
drunk off your ass and now you got to figure out flowers and a dinner yeah. reservation. Get start working on it now. I know Valentine's it's, Which by the way, it's not even uh, 2022 yet, but get ahead of it. Do yourself a favor, learn how to cook something good oh. and make it about a home cooked meal. Hey, you don't have to deal with going out and crowd at crowded ass Valentine's Day and dealing with some sub ass service from some shit wait staffs shout out to people who are good at their job but th- there's a lot of shitty wait staff members wow, in Los right. Angeles right now what? calling out the service industry I don't know what's going on uh, so do yourself a favor avoid that and learn how to make <laughs> something also uh, they'll love it and then also uh, you know, you don't have to go anywhere. So if you're really hung over, you that's, can just kind of Ryan's ultimate goal is to never go anywhere <laughs> and never celebrate anything. He is the Jehovah's witness oh. of the, uh, no, you don't like celebrating holidays. I, I don't mind some holidays. What's what's your top holiday? Oh, I love July 4th because I love America. Love, okay. love Memorial but day what did you do because for, I love our veterans. What did you do for July 4th? This uh, well, typically I would go to Dodger Stadium, watch some fireworks. This year okay. I was uh, celebrating America by camping on a beach oh, okay. uh, in beautiful Catalina, California. Sean, <laughs> and, thank and you, you for asking. You celebrated Thanksgiving by camping. And camping. On <laughs> <laughs> like to sleep in the dirt when it's about camping time. All right. All right. We're going to talk NFL picks before we get to that. We're going to talk uh, another pick, and that is tickpick.com, baby. Head over to tickpick.com slash SGP. Get some of the best prices on college football bowl tickets. You got to go to a bowl. I mean, to see a bowl game in person, it's a lot of fun. Great excuse to tailgate. You're going to be watching a ton of these games. And again, just pick a random bowl game that's happening near you. Go there, get down on some action. Tickpick.com slash SGP. The original. No fee ticket site. I was uh, on there pricing out some ticket options for the Rose Bowl, and I see service fee zero dollars, delivery what? fee zero dollars. Oh. Genius marketing by TickPick because once you see like the different uh, like item lines, you're like, oh, this is uh, where they get you zero dollars <laughs> on the fees. I'm, and I'm joining this read. I'm sorry, Sean. I just breaking in. breaking news. December 18th, Oregon State Beavers, Utah State Aggies. You wouldn't guess it, Sean. Where is so it? Sofi, baby. Oh, yes. Thirty six dollars to go to that. Is that stadium? the Jimmy Kimmel Bowl? Uh, it's the L.A. Bowl. I don't know. Do they okay. have a better sponsor than that? I, don't, I thought Jimmy Kimmel. I know is sponsoring a bowl game. We got to look into that. But again, we, we will do be, have to look into seriously look into this. No, let's go. Uh, we will be heading to tickpick.com slash SGP. And again, guarantees the best prices on all their college football tickets. If you can buy, if you can find. A uh, a better price. They will give you 110 percent of the difference in the purchase price. Tickpick.com slash S G P costs more, way more than 36 bucks a head to go to Dave and Buster's with my well, family. Yeah, so so far, definitely a better experience. I mean, just to see the inside of the stadium for so I, cheap. I know. I'm. I I think maybe we got to do that. Uh, all right, we getting right into it. You want to do? Let's uh, go. Do some. Uh, all right, Thursday night. Mm, just a. A delicious treat. We wait for this every year, Sean. Kirk Cousins in prime time hosting Big Ben Roethlisberger. So we have. You like that? You like well, it's really f- unfortunate because last time Kirk Cousins was in prime time, we were forced to bet on Kirk Cousins, Ryan, because he was playing, playing the, the Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys. So now it's great, huh? perfect situation. Well, not so fast. Just let me finish the uh, the the situation here, Minnesota laying three and a half minus minus one sixty five. Three and a half. They're giving us a three on and the a money half. line. Pittsburgh plus oh one forty five lock buttons. A 40, break right 43 now. and a half is the total road. Big Ben on a short week <laughs> coming off a big win on the, on the week that he announced he's going to be retiring uh, slash leaked it to the media. He's going How'd on the this road. News get out. He's getting on the road to face primetime Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Oh, Sean, what do we do here? Oh, it's do very we just easy. Take the I, under. And I call love. It I love the Steelers. One, oh. uh, uh, no Adam Thielen for the Vikings, yeah. and and Adam safety Thielen blanket. is the safety blanket for Kirk Cousins. T.J. Watt versus that Minnesota offensive line. Yes, please. And we've. I mean, you know. Detroit was what tenth in uh, pressure rate. They were getting to Kirk Cousins and no Thielen. Uh, you know, I think Jefferson will certainly get his, but Minnesota they struggled against the tight end. You saw Hawkinson had a big game. 
Uh, Detroit's other tight end, I'm blanking on his name. He got a touchdown. I think this is a massive Pat Fryermuth uh, game here. Ooh. The Vikings are getting Eric Kendricks back, so I think that will help them as far as Patrick uh, Peterson as well. Yeah, that's that's true. Uh, and Steelers are uh, is is it Claypool that's out? Claypool's out. Yeah. Claypool's out. So I think massive Deontay Johnson game who just keeps getting receptions after reception. Huge. I mean, if you're playing a showdown lineup, you have to put Deontay Johnson in there, but they're giving you that extra half point. That's crazy to me. I'm all over Pittsburgh here. Uh, Kirk cousins, eight and 17 in prime time. Yeah. And I mean, this also strikes me as the kind it does of feel like Zimmer's lost the team a little bit too. Well, that that's what I was going to say. Like, is, is there such a thing as a dream crusher spot in the NFL? Because this might've just happened. Uh, for this team, right? They're really banged up. Yeah, uh, they're in a situation where it's going to be easy to to quit. Uh, certainly, Justin Jefferson is going to get just blanketed. A- and again, Dream Crusher, they lost to the Lions. They're the team that lost to the Lions. Uh, I know they still have opportunity this season, but I will say this: there there is something different about this Vikings team. Um, it seems like their their games turn into games you want to get invested in DFS wise. I just wonder in this one, and to me, this is this is a game where I think Pittsburgh could come out and just pound the rock, and we could avoid yeah. a road Big Ben disaster. So, like you, I don't necessarily love because Tomlin's over five hundred now, so there's that angle too. So we a uh, little bit of the uh, concern here, but. Uh, See no reason why the look ahead was four. See no reason why this should be three and a half. Uh, did you mention Dalvin Cook? No, is he, I'm assuming he's still out, right? Yeah, it's no Dalvin Cook. I, it just, I mean, Madison isn't a huge step down for them, but yeah, this to me is just I'm fading Kirk Cousins in prime time. Uh, clearly, there's oh, yeah. some issues with Zimmer and uh, and the team. Uh, and it just seems like a great spot for the Steelers to kind of sneak out a victory. At the very least, feels like a field goal game. I'd be shocked if the Vikings put well, it on. That's the what Steelers. the Vikings do. They they play close games. So that was going to be my last point. You can't. It seems like both teams on both sides of this uh, coin are playing close games. So take the extra half point with the Steelers. You want to talk props? Uh, and I'm I'm getting some updates in the chat that we, I was wrong. It's not Chase Claypool that's out. It's a uh, Juju. Oh, oh, what? Uh, Did I agree with you? Yes, oh, you okay. you backed me up, and then now I'm looking like an idiot, and I got to re-Google this. Uh, there's no I in team, Sean. Don't worry. Clay, Claypool returned to practice, so he's that limited. is a good time. He, he's he's a little limited, little yes. little banged up. All right, uh, do you want to touch on some props? Yes, and of course we're pulling these numbers from PrizePicks.com promo code SGP. Get that 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Uh, went three and zero. With my Monday night uh, prize Let's picks props, go. plus five hundred return. I'm up in the ante on what I'm betting on these prize picks because I'm feeling hot, Ryan. When you're winning, you got to press. I mentioned it in the preview portion. It could be Pat Fryermuth over thirty-two and a half receiving yards, hmm. especially you know Juju's out, Claypool again limited in practice. Correction there. I think it's just more opportunities for uh, Fryermuth. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, I'm gonna go right to the uh, the Deontay Johnson situation. Yeah. Six and a half catches. The no- it's crazy high, but uh, I'm all over it. He just obviously him and Big Ben have a connection, and it's just gonna be there repeatedly. And you know, sprinkle in the fact that the Vikings again tend to play games and draw some extra pace out of you. So there will be enough opportunity. This, this goes over way easy. Are you're also on it. So I'll give out my second one. No, I oh. didn't. I didn't. I do like it, but I didn't actually mm. make it my, uh, one of my prize uh, picks uh, props here. This one, big Ben, who is like you said, you know, after you throw a bunch, your, your arm gets tired. <laughs> you, you're saying he's been throwing a bunch. Uh, this week? He's just been, you know, <laughs> he's got to stop doing the solo practice. Uh, ben is going to blow out his elbow, his shoulder, the whole, the whole nine, his poor wrist. Under a half interceptions, <laughs> Ryan. Off the top of your head, complete guess. How many interceptions has Roethlisberger thrown this season? It's it's got to be lower than I would get seven. Right. Obviously, if seven. it was as high as yeah. you thought, it wouldn't be an interesting bet. He has thrown uh, six, oh, only close. six interceptions. But you look at from uh, three, four, five, six. Last seven games, only two. And both of those came in that loss to Cincinnati, complete disaster game. Other than that, he's been pretty safe with the ball here. I like under a half interceptions. I think 
he doesn't throw any dangerous stuff or hasn't recently. Maybe he gets crazy on prime time, but I, I like the under here for a half interception. Justin Jefferson under 89 and a half receiving Ooh, yards. Really? I think if you're the Steelers and you're trying to win this game, you have to take him away. We see what he just did. Like, right. It's, it's obvious uh, to think like he just had one of the greatest weeks of uh, receivers had this year. Uh, so I think that plus the focus of Thielen being out uh, no cook Madison still there, get whatever. If I'm the Steelers, I double them every time and show me that you can beat me with someone else. That's how I play this game. So under 89 and a half receiving yards. Mm. Yeah. See, I, the thing I would worry about there is that he's just good. He's awesome. And no feeling means, you know, he's going to end up and we've been eliminated cool. from our ETH fantasy cool. league and he's on it. So certainly he's going to have gonna a massive off. game. It's just, if I'm the Steelers, just someone else is going to have to beat me. That's how it's going to work. I like the, I like the angle. Uh, I'm going Kirk cousins under two forty and a half. I mean, Adam Thielen <laughs> is his safety blanket. I think the Steelers aren't great against the rush. So they're going to probably pound Madison a lot. May, Cook is supposedly a game time decision. Uh, I still think they probably don't play him, especially on the short week. But regardless if it's Cook or Madison, I think they're going to look to pound the rock. We're correlated, Sean. Uh, last one, Najee Harris over sixty-five and a half. I again, I think I think the Steelers can get up and run the ball a little bit here in this game, in this spot uh, against this Vikings team with whatever is going on with that defense. So Najee Harris, 65 and a half yards felt, felt like a low number. I almost went receiving 23 and a half. Yeah. I was, I was debating back and forth and I couldn't decide which one I liked more as far as his stuff. But to your point, you know, all of the points we made about road, big Ben, him, his, his arm being tired. Like it just seems like this is going to be a nice Najee Harris game. Najee going hard. Oh, listen to those trumpets Blair. We're talking NFL. We're talking the national Football League, best place to bet it. Of course, win bet. The presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast, Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Honestly, if you're in a win bet state, there's a lot out there for you. Favorite part is the parlay boost. Well, you know, come on, you're a DJs only. Hashtag DJs only. Put in your parlays over at win bet and fire up that little uh, parlay boost. Get that extra bonus. What are you? What are you doing? You're missing out if you're not getting in on that sweet, sweet parlay boost. They have a, a ton of specials, including the one thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. All over that. Bet one dollar, win one hundred on any sport. Oh my God! College bowl season coming up. You'll be, uh, it'll be like December twenty seventh, hanging out at a you know, family's white elephant uh, exchange. Like, oh wow, this present's awesome. Just pull up the Win Sportsbook app, fire away on some random bowl games, and you'll have action. You won't have to. You won't have to. Uh, make small talk with your family, or just make small talk about uh, random bowl games you like, and uh, the over unders. Kramer, let's do it. Let's talk uh, NFL Week Sunday, 14. Sunday, 10 a.m. here on the West Coast. The Las Vegas Raiders head to Kansas City, where the Chiefs are nine and a half point favorites. Four ten on the money line, plus three thirty for the Raiders. Forty eight and a half is the total. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've heard people complain that the Broncos felt like an unlucky cover, non cover last mm. week. I call bullshit on that. That's Andy Reid off the bye. Yes. Uh, this Chiefs team is feeling good. And guess what, Sean? This Raiders team, again, they, they, they beat them last year. So they're focused to beat the crap out of them. And I saw a stat, Sean. And I think I, I, sh I should have been more prepared. I should have had this Twitter th thread up in front of me. But I believe the Raiders. Or have only lost to the Chiefs by less than a touchdown, like once in the past ten. So it was last game. So let's go. It, it, I'm I'm just riding the the Chiefs are going to crescendo into the one seed now as, as people are mucking around in the AFC. I don't think it's going to be the Patriots. It's not going to be the Titans. I don't trust the Chargers. Uh, the Chiefs are going to be the one seed again, Sean. And I'm going to have to eat crow about the goddamn water. Curing the freaking Super Bowl hangover. So you're taking the Chiefs. I'm laying the points with wow. the Chiefs. Statement game. This dude, this Raiders team is. I know. Raiders. I know the football team is playing better defense, but there's something wrong with this Raiders team. Oh yeah, 
the special teams coordinator, uh, you know, shine is wearing off this unit. Derek Carr is Derek Carr, and turns out John Gruden made him better. I actually, I'm on the Raiders here. Really, nine and a half points. I like it. Nine and a half points. I mentioned Deshaun Jackson on the DFS show. Deshaun Jackson got embarrassed in that Chiefs game where he he caught that deep ball. It should have been for the touchdown. Then he he like turned some weird way and went right <laughs> and then fumbled the ball. Yeah. This is a Deshaun Jackson revenge game, not only for that game, but also for the Chiefs passing on him. I know he wanted to reunite with Andy <laughs> Reid. I have good sourcing on that now, Ryan. Andy Reid, we talk about how good he is off the bye week. What about two weeks after oh, the bye? Do you have a number on seven this? and fourteen really? against the spread? No. And this is the ultimate look ahead spot for the Chiefs. The Chargers are they're playing the Chargers on Thursday no. night. This is a great look ahead spot for the Chiefs. You're not looking past the Raiders. Uh they hate the Raiders. Raiders beat them last year. Raiders been trying to Yeah, beat and them. the Raiders got their ass kicked in Las Vegas. This is this is the Raiders Super Bowl. I, I think the Raiders realize they're not going to the playoffs. And I think this is their Super Bowl. And I think there's some of the I mean, you watch that game eye test wise. They were in that game the entire time. That score is not reflective of the game flow. And I think this is a get right spot for them. And Kansas City's offense is not putting up a, a ton of points. And I think the I think the Raiders can hang with them. Best of luck to you, Sean. Best Let's of luck. Let's go. Uh yeah. Oh, Joe uh Joe Neuerfeld uh said no first touchdown. We'll we'll tweet those out. Uh, for Thursday night, I got to do a little more digging and some of the, thir- you know, the first touchdown stuff I'd like to put out later. We don't want to look like assholes when someone ends up not being active, you know? Yeah. Got to, we, we go deep. We'll, we go throw, big. we'll, we'll have something for you tomorrow. So uh, check it out at gambling podcast. I, lo- I like the Raiders Ryan. You're crazy. Nine and a half. Yeah. I, I just, I, I don't think they're going to lose a close game here. I think it's going to be a blowout. Maybe they win the game outright. Sean. Maybe it's one of those games, New Orleans, the heads to New York to take on the jets. Ah, poor jets saints coming off Thursday night. Sean, still not the best trend. Uh, not horrible though. Uh, I, I don't think I updated this. Let me do it real time. Uh, it's right around uh, four, 500, 14, 13, and one against the spread. So it doesn't seem like the bonus mini buy is doing uh, any teams any good. Could be correlated to the full buy woes. Saints minus five and a half on the road, minus 240 on the money line. Jets plus 200. 43 and a half is the total. I, I mean, so I understand you can make the pair. I feel like the Eagles and the Saints have been crossing over each other's mm. Venn diagrams all season. And you can make parallels. Well, yeah, the, the the Eagles came in here and Minshew, a backup quarterback, just completely slayed them. Like Taysom Hill could do the same thing. But man, if they start Taysom Hill again, they are so one-dimensional, Sean. I know they can play some defense. Yeah, but I know I- they've been a better road team. But this this line to me, this is the game that stunk the most this week. Mm. Because I I I don't I don't know who's gonna bet the Jets. I think people are gonna bet the Saints. I think they want they're like, yeah, they play you know they play the Cowboys. If that ref didn't screw up that call, they might have beat yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah, the Cowboys good team. They're gonna go on the road. They're gonna smash the Jets. I, I think we kind of like what we saw to Zach Wilson. Uh, curious to see how they defend. Uh, if they t- just take yeah, Elijah I Moore do, out of the game, I think I think Elijah Moore is gonna be able to get his. Lattimore and I forget who had this nugget, but they were talking about how Lattimore really he shows up in big games and in, in you know in spots where he really has Elijah to be challenged. Moore ain't a guy, yeah. yeah, like I I think I think they're going to be a little flat. I mean, Dome team, non conference road favorite. What have we seen from the Saints recently to be a five point road favorite non conference? Yeah, it's like Taysom Hill or Trevor. I get, Simeon. I get it. The what Jets have been bad, but the Jets have also at home been kind of frisky. I think the Eagles came in dialed in coming off that embarrassing loss against the giants. And they just weren't going to lose that game. I I do think Malcolm Jenkins gets a turnover for the saints randomly. And maybe that ends up being the difference. I do like little Jordan Humphrey to have a game where what's the latest on uh, Kamara. Is he going to be playing? I mean, you know, conspiracy theorist in me says no, because guess what, Sean, they have the bucks up on, on deck. Yeah. 
And that's a team that they go kitchen sink for. That's a that's a game that they've shown up and done pretty well in. And uh, you know, the look ahead spot mixed with the fact that I like who's laying points with like who's running to the window to 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 take the to lay the points with Taysom Hill. And on the flip side, do you really feel good <laughs> grabbing the points? No, I don't Zach feel. I, I think this is an interesting game in DFS because I think both these teams have interesting holes on their defense. Uh, Jets being like in middle of the field, and Saints, I think uh, their their defense isn't isn't as good, especially on the road outside that dome. I'm gonna take the Jets catching five and a half, but I I'm this is not there's no lock potential for this game. It's it's both reasonable to expect that the Saints offense could do what the Eagles offense did to the Jets, but it's also reasonable to expect that like Zach Wilson might be starting to figure some stuff out. Like he didn't look god awful last week against the Eagles. Um he's looking like a pretty good quarterback, like a serviceable rookie quarterback, and so I wonder if another week and, a, and another test I mean, I'm circling this one. We're going to come back to it. This is a money line dog potential. Jacksonville heads to Tennessee dog. where the Titans are coming off the buy laying nine and a half minus four thirty on the money line. Jags plus three 40, 44 is the total Jags just got their ass beat. Uh, not a close your eyes special though. Fortunately oh, teams off God. the buy 10 and 14 against the spread. Um, Yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 to me, like Tennessee off the buy, they're a team I'm willing to think can get better coming off the buy. I'm, I'm, I'm well, they again, were also the, super, super banged up. They got healthy. Uh, they got rid of Adrian Peterson. He was really pulling the team down. Julio <laughs> uh, looks to be healthy. He's a fun, you know, mini game. If you want to game stack this one, or maybe even a Tanny Hill uh, quarterback situation, Julio could be fun. Foreman, uh, Foreman's been interesting as running back too. Like I, I think. I think the Titans really turn it on here. I know they've struggled to put up a ton of points uh, with that. I, th- you know, the last two games with no AJ Brown, no Derrick Henry, I think what 13 points in each That's, game. It's tough. So uh, you could say like, oh, they're going to struggle to put up points and they've certainly lost to bad teams at home. I mean, they got, they lost to the Texans <laughs> outright this though, again, uh, it's the Jags yeah. and the Jags are just, they're stuck in auto fade. I can't in good conscience, Ryan, recommend taking this Jags team. I mean, they're just, they're not sneaking up on anyone. They don't rack up garbage points. I mean, you know, James Robinson, one of their best players and he's, it, they like held him out because he fumbled once. It's like, what urban, are you Meyer doing? Knows urban Meyer, it's coming to an end. Trevor Lawrence came out and said, James is one of our best players. And I want him in the game. This is a rookie quarterback challenging his head coach. I know it seems innocuous, but I, I think it speaks to a bigger issue. The Jags are just no. a complete fucking disaster. I do think Vrabel is a g- good head coach. He struggled as a uh, as a big favorite though. Vrabel th- three and six against the against the spread as a favorite of a touchdown or more. But again, this Jags team is an outlier. I'm I'm going Tennessee minus nine and a half. You know, you have been a little bit of a Tennessee fanboy this yes, year. Yes, I have. But I think the Jags are an auto fade. And uh, I again, I like Vrabel to have this team coming out, understanding that they need, you know, they have a short little sprint now to the end of the season. They're in great position, and they definitely need to take care of business in this one and take care of it quickly. And so, you know, this kind of falls in the same boat as the the Chiefs game. Go out and bet it before it hits ten. Teams quit. Jags have quit. Baltimore heads to Cleveland. In an interesting situation, Sean. Cleveland coming off a bye. Last game before the bye, the Ravens. Yeah. Browns minus two and a half in this one. Minus 140 on the money line. Ravens plus 120. 42 and a half is the total. Sean, fun fact this was the Lamar through four interceptions, but they still won the football game. Yeah. So the Browns get revenge. The Browns aren't laying three. Don't quite get that. And as I pointed out in the DFS show, I like the passing matchup. Although, there, there does appear to be some weather uh, mm-hmm. forecasted in the beautiful Cleveland area. Regardless, I, I don't see any reason why the defense can't turn him over again like this. Can and the Browns just start Case Keenum? Can they just do it? And Baker's healthy. Why he, two weeks is he healthy? Two weeks in the hyperbaric chamber. 
Uh, and, and you know, I'm cer- no, certain he's eating nacho cheese. That is a stadium he's, house. He's healthier than he was before. He's getting rest. He's I guess feeling dangerous. Yeah. Again, I hate taking the Browns here. I'm going this, to. Yeah. I mean, oh, I I was on another show and they said uh, Cleveland two and a half, and I took Cleveland two and a half, and I said, got to take him as a home dog. I was kind of assuming Cleveland was going to be getting points, but I I and you you talked about it a bunch on the DFS show. Baltimore is just so thin at secondary right now. I think you have to, I have to take Cleveland, even though they don't have a ton of receivers to take advantage of it. I do think the reemergence of Kareem Hunt, and especially if this ends up being a run-heavy game, having Chubb and Hunt, I, I think is really going to be the difference. Because if you put both of them in the backfield at the same time, there's talk about them doing some packages like that. They could really go off. And uh, just updating the weather, it, it seems as though the weather report has gotten better. It, it's looking more like it's going to be a not a dry day, maybe a touch of wind, but we'll see in the forties. So, I mean, I, I, again, I think the, the angle here that scares me is that my betting instincts tell me to take the two and a half, don't lay the two and a half. And my betting instincts tell me that when I see a team uh, catching ha- half of the money and uh, sorry, half of the tickets and almost eighty percent of the money. I, I that I'm joining the heavy side of this, but uh, I do worry it'll become a popular side. So mm. I would I would prefer this to be a completely unpopular p- opinion. Be- it just I don't need the Ravens as an unpopular dog. Lamar is one of those guys that just takes care of business in that spot. Atlanta heads to Carolina. Carolina off the bye. New offensive coordinator, Sean. Uh, dude that called plays for Matt Rule at Baylor, minus three, minus one thirty-five on the money line. Falcons plus one fifteen. Forty-three is the total. I mean, I, what am I missing? What am I missing that Cam Newton is laying points? He was five for twenty-one with two interceptions. Got benched for PJ Walker, and he's a favorite. Sean, not two After weeks ago. After getting rid of their offensive coordinator, no uh, Christian McCaffrey. How are they going to be able to move the ball, Sean? I just. Uh, I, I we t- we spoke about how sad it was we weren't going to get to fade Cam Newton. Yeah, as I assumed he would be <laughs> done. We were reading the obituary. This is unbelievable. Atlanta still very much a professional football team with a professional coach and a professional quarterback. Why? And you have Matt Rule and a team that I you know I don't know how Ryan, good of a coach he is. This reminds me of the end days of Matt Schaub where you, <laughs> where you, we go we can't keep betting against Matt Schaub and making money. You no. Know? Let's go. Uh, ironically, Matt Ryan is also looking the part of a quarterback yeah. that should be uh, faded more than he's backed. Yeah, I, I don't. Again, back to the buy situation. Matt Rule, I'm not sure what he was up to in the bye week, but uh, feels like a desperation move to get rid of Joe Brady. Both well, on Atlanta. you know, um, someone had a uh, uh, one of the shows I was. It may have been Ryan Rosillo had a theory that. Maybe because of all the college upheaval, Joe Brady was out sniffing around to maybe get a college oh, job. Just said, they got wind of it and, and cut here. him. I, I, that kind of makes more sense to me than canning the coordinator. I mean, if well, I'm, the offense sucked, it, it makes yeah, a lot of sense. Well, I get, but if I'm Joe Brady, I just you know bring in a photo of Cam Newton and be like, "This was my quarterback. What the hell do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. I can only polish a turd so much. If you're gonna make me start Cam Newton, Sam Darnold, and PJ Walker, and the offense is my fault, all right. I I mean, I, I like don't know. That. Maybe I, Joe Brady sucks, but I I think it's tough to honestly. I like gauge that Joe Brady when you have Sam Darnold, PJ Walker, and Cam Newton alternating starts. It's a fair point. Sam Darnold looks so good to start the season. Remember that? Yeah. That was unbelievable. Dallas coming off Thursday night football. We were both on the Falcons plus three. Both that on wasn't the Falcons clear. plus three. Dallas coming off Thursday night. Wa- uh, heads to Washington where the football team plus four, plus 170 on the money line. Dallas minus 190. 48 is the total. All right. So obviously we're both going to sit here on Washington. Yeah. Divisional matchup, dog, home dog. dog. The the football team's number one rival. Everyone knows this. Mm-hmm. Uh, arguably, the Cowboys' uh, greatest rival. If you ask some old school Cowboy fans, I I don't understand why we're just going to ignore the fact that this Cowboys team almost lost to a terrible Saints team. 
a, a Saints team I just picked against the New York Jets. Meanwhile, Washington playing with confidence. Taylor Heineke, dude's a dog. They are, they are rallying, and they, it's weird at post Ron Chase Rivera. Young. Post Chase Young, the defense has kind of come together. Well, I don't know, understand the dynamics there, but they certainly seem to be playing better as a team defensively with no Chase Young. I can't make sense of it. Uh, maybe it's the classic like Bill Simmons, uh, Patrick Ewing theory, but I, they seem to be gelling and. Heineke plays a very clean game. The only reason the Cowboys were in that game was because of penalties and the four interceptions that that uh, Taysom Hill threw. If Ooh. Heineke can limit the turnovers, which he's shown an ability to do, and play a relatively clean game, I think they'll be in this game. This feels like a field goal game. I, I'm going to take the home team getting four points. And Dallas's defense has gotten a lot of praise over the season. You know, Diggs. Has had all those interceptions, defensive touchdowns, which have been huge. But if you're a yards per play guy, mm, uh, Dallas this. is actually second worst in the NFL, only to the Jets, 5.9 yards per play. Now you're playing a, an efficient offense like Washington. It's not high powered. It's not going to put up a ton of points. They're just going to methodically drive down there, settle for field goals, and stay in this game. I, I, I think they're going to be in the game. No Logan Thomas certainly hurts them. Uh, late breaking news: Montez Sweat out for COVID. Mm, saw that. Underdog in this rivalry has covered sixteen of the past twenty five meetings. So again, it's it's a classic NFC East matchup. You're giving the home team points. Feels like a good spot to take them. Yeah. Last thing to add is, uh, like I know when things are going well for Dallas, they look really well, they look really good. But when things aren't going well. I mean, Dak goes immediately into like looking very inconsistent. And again, I, I, I wonder, I wonder if he's not hurt. Mm. I wonder if there's something going on there because he doesn't look and maybe that last they game, get all their skill players back. They're all healthy. They're off the mini buy. Maybe they come out firing all cylinders and completely light it up. That's, that's a possibility, Ryan. We have to acknowledge at least. And, and to to your earlier point about Chase Young, it sounds like Jonathan Allen, amongst other players, have kind of stepped up. And you know who knows? Maybe when you got one one guy in the room that's taking all the prime beef, uh, <laughs> gets in the way of some other dudes eating. So, you know, it's not the first time, like you said, the Ewing theory. Um, but in this case, it almost feels like the team has collectively said, "Oh wow, we, we lost our best player. We better all play harder." Seattle. Heads to Houston, Sean. We got to close your eyes special here because the Texans underperform underperformed the spread by 21 points last week. Ooh. And now they're catching seven and a half at home, plus 280 on the money line. Seahawks minus 340. 41 and a half is the total. Well, that was nice of them to get up and beat San Francisco like they always do. Now. Boom. Oh, really? You're gonna take what? <laughs> back on the Houston bandwagon. Oh, really? Oh man, I don't know. Uh, Davis Mills, is Jamal start. Jamal Adams is now out for the season. Not, I think uh, Davis Mills starting. I think Mills could be could get some garbage points here. Um, and uh, Seahawks aren't great as large favorites. Five and thirteen against the spread, minus six or greater since twenty seventeen. <sighs> this is just not the spot you take, Ross. Uh, I don't know. I could see. He seems to be slowly getting better. Washington, he was like almost. He still looked kind of bad. Uh, and then San Francisco, he looked better throwing the ball. Yeah, I mean they they, they still had a bunch him. of they they beat the 49ers. A lot of that was that Travis Homer play. They got the Rams. They on got out gained by the uh, 49ers. It's a sandwich spot. You like the sandwich spot. Rams on one side, Niners on the other. <laughs> McVay, Shanahan, sandwich. Colby, Colby is my dad. 420 saying. Uh, all right, Kramer, you can st you can steal one of my kidneys if you need it, Sean. You're dead to me. He hates that I keep taking the Seahawks every week. I can't take the Texans, man. I can't do it. <laughs> They're completely dead. Enjoy your Houston plus seven and a half. I'm I'm dangerous. Let's go. I, I mean, I, you know, obviously, you can pass this game. No, come on, Seattle. <laughs> it's only a lean for me, Sean. I, it, the Houston. I mean, I messed around with Houston. They, they, they got shut out against the Colts. I mean, that was a that was a division game. There, there are better spots than taking Seattle in a sandwich spot on the road in Houston. 
No, I agree. That's all I'm saying. I, I agree. And I'm going to listen to the close your eyes special because it's seven and three against the spread this year, Sean. It's six and four straight up. These are bad teams every week. Let's go. No, no, I understand, dude. Good I, pussy's I good pussy. I, I just can't take the Texans. I remember that time. I'd rather co- I'd rather lose with the uh, Seahawks than than cover with the Texans because I just it's not. Yeah, they're just the Texans. The co- I bet on the Texans too dude, many times. My buddy problem. used to hitchhike to Radford because he said it was that good. <laughs> uh yeah, give me Seattle one more time. Danger Russ hanging on there. Oh man. You're looking for a better way to play fantasy football? I got it for you. Better fantasy. Head over to betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. Sync your league right now. Playoffs right around the corner. What better way to enjoy the fantasy football playoffs? Playoffs than by having point spreads, money lines, prop bets all dialed into your fantasy football league, and you get free credits that you can play and bet in your fantasy football league. Again, completely free to play. And uh, as you rack up those credits, you can uh, turn them into gift cards. Again, you got to give the, uh, we got to give the mail lady a gift card for the holidays. Again, you're already giving them your tax dollars. I apparently got a tip or a st- Starbucks gift card as well. Well, win a Starbucks gift card. According to your wife, you got to do it. Win a Starbucks gift card, a better fantasy. <laughs> Send it to the mail lady. Christmas has been saved. Also, if you get everyone in your league to sync to better fantasy, $150 trophy smack gift card. Don't have to collect money for your fantasy football trophy this year. I mean, come on. Do yourself a favor. Betterfantasy.com slash SGPN. I know our audience. They're gonna love it. Also gonna love so bet. That's right. So bet.io. It's head to head gambling. What gambling used to be all about. Mono e mano, me versus you. Battling it out on so bet. All you got to do is go to sobet.io slash SGPN, set up your account, get ready to go, start challenging your friends, family, maybe the mail lady again. Uh, very easy to set up, very easy to, you know, do all kinds of crazy bets. Uh, they also, you also can connect uh, third party uh, payment apps to your SoBet account as well. Just head over to sobet.io slash SGPN to get started today and join the social betting revolution. Detroit, Sean, they're heading to Denver. Take on the Broncos, Detroit coming off a win, heading to Denver to take on the Broncos. Broncos minus eight, minus three eighty on the money line. Plus three ten for the lions. 41 and a half is the total immediately mental noted it. Got to take the team. The lions are playing after that win last week. It's a big number, Sean. Are we still taking? I know the Broncos. In my head, I was like, auto play the uh, like you said, auto play whoever the Lions have next. Uh, But then you're like, man, Broncos. Can the Broncos really put up points? They've struggled putting up points. Uh, Javante Williams can maybe do this by himself. That well, that's that's the other thing. Like the the Lions, you're able to run on the Lions, and I think Javante Williams himself can carry a load and, and really dominate. I mean, it's a good He's defense. One of those guys who will get penetration. It's a good defense uh, with a smart defensive coordinator against Jared Goff. Yeah. No, a fan I think is going to dial up something Spe- for Jared Goff speaks to whatever is wrong with Mike Zimmer and the Vikings because <laughs> Goff looked pretty. I mean, it's pretty easy with Jared Goff. You just bring pressure. Uh, he's going to have trouble doing it. And we saw the Eagles game plan just physically pound the rock. And they're going to be in trouble. Eight points is a lot for this Broncos team, but again, it's an, you have a dome team after their first win, non-conference road spot. I just think they're going to fall flat. I I know the Broncos could overlook them. I know the Broncos could struggle to put up points. Broncos do kind of struggle a little bit with the tight end. I, I think Hawkinson might have a decent game, but I just don't see Jared Goff getting up for this. I mean, you saw his his girlfriend's reaction. I mean, to him winning the game, so I, I have a feeling he's just going to be laying around in bed, hanging out, celebrating all weekend, all week. You think he makes the re- the right read with her every time? I'll tell you this: lots uh, of a lot of questions. Uh, Jared Goff's girlfriend does not come on uh, Jared Goff 
sucks island. She is not a part of it. She was on a different island when she found out the news. She got busted. It's <laughs> yeah. like a Ryan's roses. Yeah, she was on some other island. Uh I don't know, man. The the Lions on the road. I just don't see it. I mean, they they've been a scrappy team, so you could get cute and take Lions uh plus eight here. I wouldn't put the Broncos in a tease. I'll tell you that. Really? Yeah. You call it for the Lions to go two back to back. No, I mean out of your goddamn mind. Come on, stick to your gut. Denver minus eight. No, I Broncos I like Denver minus eight, but I'm not messing around with the T's. I think there is a small world where, you know, Detroit um, you know, hangs around. So I, I certainly like Denver minus eight. Bold prediction. We're talking about Denver as a team to watch for the playoffs after they smash Detroit. Twenty one plus point win. Let's I'll, I'll prop bet that. Broncos win by we'll we'll call it seventeen or more. I'll double the spread. Wow. Broncos win by seventeen or more. That'll pleaser be a teaser, bet. Ryan. Pleaser teaser. Oh man, God bless the pleaser teaser. Uh, that one was one oh five uh, here on the West Coast. By the way, next up on the afternoon slate, one oh five Chargers hosting the New York Football Giants. Of course, Sean, I won't be there because uh, we're going on our island adventures this weekend. Yeah, me to Rhode Island, you to Hawaii. Yep. Two island destination. <laughs> uh islands on both sides. Giants. Big road dogs here. Plus ten and a half, plus oh. three ninety on the money line, minus four ninety for the Chargers. Forty three is the total. Low total, <laughs> big spread. Um G Man. What do you do here? Well, Sean, uh, the Chargers, when they're at home, you fade them. And when yeah, they're on the they're road, ag- they're against you take the them. spread record is horrible. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, yeah, you didn't mention it, but Daniel Jones, my sources are telling me is out for the year. We won't be getting that announcement till later on. Uh, they want to hold on to a, a little bit of hope, but he will not be playing uh, for the rest of 2021. Uh, I mean, I, season. It it almost feels like I have to dig up the first instance of me talking about my quote unquote conspiracy about the uh, power struggle that Joe Judge is going to have to win uh, from ownership this year, but. Are we seeing maybe the last snap he's taken as a giant? Daniel Jones? Uh well, I know they're gonna get rid of Gettleman. Uh they love Joe Judge because he's a football guy and makes people run laps. Judge didn't draft Daniel Jones. The new GM didn't draft Jan- Daniel Jones. Oh, well, I think they could get rid of Judge and Daniel Jones. Um Oh, Judge isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Why? He's not good. I mean, I think it, because ownership had this bug stuck up their ass with Jason Garrett and uh, with some of these players, and now that Judge has proven his point, he's going to be given at least another season. So that's the way that that's going to roll. Thank as God. As far as this game, thank you. As far as this, no, I. Well, now, I, I just like, asked you if Daniel Jones has taken his last snap as a Giant. So oh, I'm not saying not. he's. I hope be back. not. I hope not. Uh, I'm saying Joe Judge will be back. The defense will be back. Patrick Graham will be back. Giants plus ten and a half is the obvious spot here. As you, you're, well, and, and we have you're not laying ten and a half with this Chargers team at home. When who do they have on deck, Sean? The Chiefs. The Chiefs on a Thursday, and Mike Williams is out. Chris Harris Jr. is out with COVID. They're uh, late add to the list. Keenan Allen is say, out. Do they have any receivers? N- no, it's it's going to be Jalen Guyton. Right. And you Let's could just bet this right. You now. could talk me into uh, Austin Eckler now in DFS. I, I mean, the Giants' defense is pretty solid, but I think just from a volume, like he could have, you know, Eckler could have twelve catches. A uh, Donald Parham is all of a sudden super interesting again. Not so much because of the matchup against the Giants defense, which has been pretty solid. They're just completely dog shit on offense. Kenny Galladay uh, hurt. Kadarius Tony doesn't want to play. He's working on his rap career, and now it looks wow. like Jake Fromm is going to start. Oh, love that, love it. I I I would be worried a little bit about uh, Jake Fromm uh, pick six type things swinging <laughs> the spread. No, nah, he's a gamer. Uh, SEC. SEC hashtag team small hands. Uh, I, I'm rooting for you, Jake. Wow! But I I'm a little worried that he could. <laughs> Was that his turn, downfall? Small hands and no arm strength. Um, mm. Not able mm. to. Do you think he has a good arm? Ah, you know. I guess we'll see Sunday. We'll see, yeah. I think I'll let you know. <laughs> I think he could uh, he could struggle and to the point where he turns it over and creates some real issues for them. But again, uh, well, this is an interesting. Game because our Giants fans actually going to show up in Los Angeles. 
I, I, I'm sure there will be Giants fans at that stadium Re- cheering for the Giants. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's just it's a volume. I just imagine situation. a lot of guys like our boy uh, Nagels Bagels who are Giants fans, but also just super pissed off at the Giants. Oh, that's behind closed doors. Like, <laughs> if the Giants parade came by his house, he'd be out front with his chair True. checking it out. So. Uh, but yeah, I think ten and a half. This is, is insane, crazy. right? Yeah. Like, regardless of the quarterback, um, money line potential. They have no receivers. It's crazy. San Francisco heads to Cincinnati. Sean, would you believe it if I told you the Bengals are a close your eyes special? Plus one and a half home dogs. Plus one hundred five on the money line. Niners minus one twenty five. Forty nine is the total. Jimmy, like this is a confusing game because close your eyes special is usually supposed to not be appealing. It's usually not supposed to make sense. And this one, you know, frankly, I just look at Jimmy G in the eyes, Kyle Shanahan in the eyes, non-conference road spot in the eyes. And I say, really get the fuck out of here. This Bengals team seems to be proud. Wait, the Bengals are dogs. Yeah. Oh my God. They're going to bounce back here. Yeah. I just, I just concerns me because it's not a close your eyes special. I'm looking mm. at this one right in the face and I like it. I, I, I like the Bengals uh, in the it, matchups do we, on do the we, field. Do we know D- if Debo's playing? He's Debo's a big out. A hundred percent or I mean, like 90. I, I picked Kittle in my DFS lineup based on the fact that, that Debo's out. I think, you know, the target distribution will be very narrow as they say, but I think I think just specifically the way that this team played last week, they, they started slow. And then when they picked it up, they made a couple of mistakes. And so it's like multiple dimensions of cleanup, right? Like we got to start fast, man. And we got to clean up this bullshit. And Oh, by the way, Joe Burrow hand hurt a little bit. So I, I think they're going to make a conscious effort to get Mixon involved. And, and frankly, I think they're going to be able to pick on this secondary for the Niners. And Jamar Chase is in my DFS lineup because I expect big things from him. And on the flip side, the Niners are banged up again under John Lynch, on under Kyle Shanahan. They just can't keep their players healthy. <laughs> that is funny. And Kyle Shanahan is a trash coach. I, we have super to, overrated. We have Scam to, a hand. We have to at the, least the give only, a little credit the, here. Why are they favored? Why are they favored in this game? It, it makes no sense. I got to uh, I'm sorry. Trevor. Trevor pointing out, and, and this is an angle. Joe Burrow against that D line. Only part that worries me. I, I agree. Yeah, Maybe they have some offensive line injuries. Issues, like, and and again, Joe Burrow, that pinky, he played through it, but how healed is it? I mean, it's a pinky. I I think he should be uh, he should be good to go. I like I like Cincy at home yeah. in this spot. Home dog is a really great spot for this Bengals team. Must win situation. It's gonna be cold. Jimmy, you know, pretty yeah. pretty boy Shanahan's flat brim's gonna uh, crack. I think and they that. might. I, and yeah, uh, and especially the the Bengals receivers against the 49ers cornerbacks in the secondary that are continue to be banged up. I mean, we saw Seattle kind of come to life. They're passing game a little bit. I think this is a great bounce back spot for a guy like Jamar chase T Higgins, all those guys, uh, and, you know, T Higgins had a decent game, but I think this is a nice bounce back spot. For and them. I noted it down and I'm sure you're going to say, maybe this doesn't matter, but I do think Kyle Shanahan has at least a couple thoughts about the fact that he gets the host of Val- Falcons next week. Perhaps he's been thinking oh, a little bit. Yeah, that is a nice look. Smashing at his old uh, situation. Buffalo. Well, now we're uh, where are we at? This isn't right. It's another afternoon game here. Uh, Buffalo coming off Monday Night Football. Sean, holy shit! Seventeen and four ATS. Seventeen three and one straight up. Teams coming off Monday Night. It's Buffalo too easy. Heads to Tampa Bay. Well, is it? Where the Bucks are minus three, minus one sixty five on the money line. Buffalo plus one forty five. Fifty three is the total. This is a little short, right? This number should be three and a half. This number should be five, in my opinion. What am I missing? Because I, I I'm I guessing the, you I like Buffalo. Are, I think there are some three and a halfs. Yeah, I'm on Buffalo here. I think Josh, Josh Allen bounces back. Uh, you know, Brady has quietly been turning the ball over a little bit. I think that gets overlooked. And the Bucks defense, their run defense is great. Okay, awesome. Who gives a shit? Bills don't run. I think I think they're gonna have a nice day game throwing the ball. I think 
Dawson Knox is going to have a massive bounce back game and the Bills this is like a huge game for them. I know Brady has said uh, the game against Buffalo is one of the biggest games of the year, but they got the Saints on deck. That is actually I know the Saints aren't great, but I do think that division game is something they get up for and the Bills they've shown an ability to go down in Florida and play well there. Uh, ironically, I think they struggled with some of the wins, being able to throw the ball and not, I don't know why, uh, you know, Brian Dable didn't run the ball more with Josh Allen, more design runs. I think we're going to see that. And we running quarterbacks have done well against the bucks. I think this is a must win for the bills. And I think this is, they're going to throw everything they have at this bucks team. And I think they're uh, I like them getting points. Uh, you know, there's part I, I do wonder like what 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 ha, was that is there a pro dream crushing spot the the way that they lost uh the the last game like are we at all concerned that the bills might be a little bit of a fraudulent team uh yeah i i think to some degree they smash bad I think teams they, i think they got embarrassed on Monday night because they literally got pushed around. Mm. You know, Sean McDermott was chippy with uh, Bill Belichick. He's like, oh, don't don't give the coach all the credit. And you know, he was probably, I'm sure his defense would be, well, you know, I was talking about you should give the credit to the players on the field, but clearly he was pissed off, pissed off at Belichick. Um, that I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. I think the entire team does. Yeah, and I think they're good enough to get the job done against uh, Tampa Bay. Yeah, I, I th- to me this is just I think the number is off. I, I do think this should be uh, closer to four or even five. And and frankly, Sean, it's going to be eighty degrees. I, I I think we handicap the cold weather games late in the season all the time, but eighty degrees is a is is a big difference for these Buffalo Cats coming down to Tampa. Give me TB twelve and the Bucks to take care of business. Only laying three Sunday night football Bears Packers Packers off the bye. Laying 12, minus 650 on the money line, Bears plus 475. 43 and a half is the total. There's no handicap here. And Aaron, Aaron Rodgers smashes the Bears. He hates the Bears. Andy yeah. Dalton sucks. Uh, Matt Nagy. Really bad. Normally, I would say, hey, rivalry game. They're going to get Take up the it's dog, Bears yeah. Packers, but I don't know what what's Matt going Nagy, on in that situation. The the bear. Everyone's out on the Bears. Uh, Rodgers another week to rest his uh, tovid or whatever he's dealing with there. I I think if Andy Dalton or Justin Fields plays, turnovers could be an issue. And the the mind fuck here, Aaron Rodgers on playing the Bears again after the I own you incident. I don't know that you can uh, question a whole lot of what I said. I have no regrets <laughs> for saying what I said. <laughs> I mean, you know, we like busting Aaron Rodgers' chops, but that is that is pretty hilarious. And they even followed up on. It. He goes, I I think my record speaks for itself. MVP. He's MVP. he's right there. I mean, At weeks ago you said it was not possible. The media will never so. vote for him. <laughs> he's back. Uh, yeah, I'm mean, honestly I don't have a ton of things to say about this game because I, I really think the handicap is the Packers. Uh, Alexander, it sounds like is back at practice for the yeah, Packers. They which, may even get Bakhtiari back. I mean, if if Chicago had its full roster of defensive studs, then maybe I you, maybe they, you could talk me into it. And Green Bay is actually pretty decent run defense. So the idea of just handing it off to David Montgomery 30 times and staying alive that way, I don't think it's a reality. I think the Packers in general, um, you know, as they get healthier, can play a little bit of defense. So and and you know, is this a look at spot for the Packers? I don't think it is because it's Sunday night football. It's the Bears. I, I think they're gonna get fired it's up. It's not a look ahead spot. Aaron Rodgers loves himself. It's primetime <laughs> football. Come yeah. on. We've been here before. Like th- this is how it works. Aaron Rodgers is going to come out. The belt's going to come out because he's probably going to run one win- run one in. So make sure you get you get on the Aaron Rodgers first touchdown train. Oh yeah. It's it's come on. Like certain dudes are motivated for some reason. Monday night football. Let's go. All right, Sean. This is fun. Los Angeles. Dun dun. The Rams. Big game here, heading to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. Sean minus two for the Cardinals, minus one forty on the money line. Rams plus one twenty. Fifty two is the total. Is this not a touch disrespectful to the to the Cardinals? To the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm I, I'm so, I've swung all the way the fuck. Off you're the, off the Maddie Stafford bandwagon. No, right? and off the fading this Cardinals team. Yeah. Seeing what they're able to accomplish with or without their top players, like obviously they got something going on here. 
Why is this not more uh, well, three and, minimum? And, and we brought up the the stat of uh, Matt Stafford against winning teams, how he really struggles. And you said, what was it like? He had never beat a team that was. Uh, he's never beaten a team that's uh, five games over five hundred. And the Cardinals certainly qualify. <laughs> Now them to get two, never and now Rams. This means everything to the Rams. They're gonna throw everything at the Cardinals. I still like the Cardinals. I mean, D Hop and Kyler didn't even have to do that much uh, against the Bears. No one's talking about this Cardinals defense. The Cardinals defense is legitimately good. Did I see JJ Watt could be uh, could come back if they go like for a playoff? Oh run? really? If they <laughs> if they make a deep run, you know Matt Stafford has his back and elbow issue, which again only affects him. When he's playing teams above 500, somehow the back was feeling pretty good against uh, Jacksonville. We may be hearing some back problems after this game in Arizona, and this is one of my favorite stats I found all week, Ryan. In the last four weeks, yes, what quarterback oh. has had a better passer rating than Matt Stafford? It's obviously more than one, but the one I'm choosing to discuss: uh, Gardner Minshew, Jared. Goff, uh, Gardner Minshew definitely does, but uh, Jared Goff in the last four games, eighty nine point eight passer rating. Matt Stafford, eighty six point eight. Also, yeah, I, I, I wrote down a, a little bit about for the Rams because this is important, Sean. Weeks one and two, they played the Bears and Colts. Bears were four or four and eight. Colts are seven and six. Since then, uh, those were the wins. Since then, Seahawks four and eight, Giants four and eight, Lions one ten and one, Texans two and ten, Jags two and ten. Uh, any uh, other than beating the Colts early in the season, Colts obviously a different team now than they were then. But other than that, they have not beaten a good team. Yeah, because they have Matt Stafford. We saw uh, obviously there's a revenge and they spot have Odell. here. There's He's a revenge cursed. spot, but. What makes you think the Rams have gotten better since that last matchup, and no, the Card- much or, worse. or the Cardinals have gotten worse? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're worried about Kyler's health, but he was healthy enough against Chicago. But they let him rest, and he's he's yeah. back, and he looked all right. He was running around, looking like a spry uh, young uh, gymnast about to do the 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 pommel horse <laughs> or the vault. Uh, I just. I don't know how you can give this much respect to the Rams in the betting market when that's who they've beaten. Like that is that is a murderer's row of the top ten of next year's draft. That's what that is. Yeah, and and I get it. Home field's not worth three uh, automatically anymore. But uh, but this the, Arizona team's good. I, I I don't get it. Can I make the the case that maybe Arizona does deserve three uh, in a dome? Uh, the dry heat, Sean. You know about this. Oh, Got to yeah. get the humidifier in the hotel room. Uh, there are aspects to, to to Arizona that would would be an advantage, and not to mention the crowds into it. You've been to a game there before. It's not the worst crowd. Is it a bad crowd? <laughs> yeah, it's a bad crowd. Okay. But I think they'll be. I think they'll be jacked up for this game. I feel like it's a good crowd. It's when a the Monday team's night. Well. Yeah, it's a Monday night. I, See I, you red. By the way, Arizona fans, I, I I have your back. Unlike Sean, who just called you a bad crowd. No, I I said uh, I mean they were a bad crowd when they were playing the Patriots, and the <laughs> Arizona missed the game winning kick, oh. and everyone cheered, and I thought they had made it because the crowd, so the entire Patriots crowd fans. cheered, and it was all Pats fans, uh, all over Arizona here, and th- it's more just about a fate of uh, Matty Stafford and that offense. The a- Arizona's defense, I think, you can make a case Arizona's defense is the best unit on this f- game on this field. Which is crazy, but I think that's really the case. Yeah, I mean, bring up your precious DVOA. They got to be down. No, I, what I was gonna say is just just look at the Rams' schedule lately. Like they, they're just when they play a good team, they they're they, bad. They they lose. Sometimes it's just that simple. It's like the Chargers <laughs> when they're at home, you fade them. When yeah. they're on the road, you take them. Th- this week does have a lot of really basic, simple systems for people to follow. No, Nick Sirianni, See what love I did it. There? Nick Sirianni, Ryan. We coach, made it, coach we, of the year is a lot. Uh, we got to the end. Colts, Dolphins, Patriots, and your Eagles, of course, on the bye. No more bye weeks. We Four. are we are cooked After with bye this weeks. Solid month of football heading into the playoffs. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, time for the lock dog and tease presented by prizepicks.com. Head over to prizepicks.com. Sign up using our promo code SGP. Get that hundred percent instant. Deposit bonus. Take some of your uh, favorite player over and unders and 
Again, very easy to play, even easier to cash in if you're in a state that doesn't have uh, player props. Well, prize picks is a fun way to play. And again, it's uh, you know go three and zero, oh and you turn twenty dollars into one hundred with their power play option. Happy <laughs> Kramer, kick things off. What do you got? Uh, locks. I'm going to a couple short favorites. Uh, give me the Browns. Ooh. In this revenge spot, back to back games versus the Ravens coming off the bye. Give me the Cardinals. Okay. On Monday Night Football. Uh, again, I, I, these teams are winning games. There's other games I like. So uh, Arizona. Okay. So Cleveland and sorry, Arizona. I'm just getting the locks out of the way. Dog, I feel like you're going to, you're going to crush me if I give out Cincy as my dog. You um, can do that. One and a half point dog. It's a little baby dog, right? Like, is that. It just, just okay. give out winners. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Let's Washington football team plus one seven. Okay. What do you got for the T's? T's. A lot of a uh, lot of good opportunities. Honestly, this might be the week to do a seven point teaser and do the, some things with Kansas City and Tennessee. But we'll stick to the six pointer. Uh, first up, Denver down to minus two. I'm willing to go there. You are not. Uh, give me the Bengals up to seven and a half. Again, I, I'm unclear as to why they're an underdog. Seems too easy. And for the last leg in the tee, Sean. Mm. See how dramatic I'm being. Uh, Washington at ten. I, I know I'm not getting through all the key numbers, but how is this team? Like, if there's one thing I know about Taylor Heineke, he's got the look of a man who can find the back door. And so he's even if, in. even if it's not going well, give me Washington plus ten. All right, let's do it. My lock. Give me Pittsburgh plus three and a half. Ooh, a Thursday night lock. Look oh, at come you. on. Kirk Cousins in prime time doesn't get any easier. My other lock. Give me. Now, do I make this my lock or do I make it my dog, Ryan? That is the only question I have to ask myself. I'll go Cincinnati plus one and a half yeah. is my other lock. For my dog, Atlanta money line. Let's go, Falcons. Against Cam Newton? You're getting plus money against Cam Newton? So you're telling me the book has to lay 11. Plus 115. <laughs> so easy. All right. What four, do they know? Four by T's. I'm going to put Seattle in a tease. I don't give a shit. Minus <laughs> one and a half. Wow, dude. You're coming out just blazing. Green Bay minus six. Come on. And oh, wow. uh, okay. a lot of key numbers there. Uh, 10 key. and 7. That's key all you ish. need. And key then ish. for my last one, do I tease the Giants up to 16 and a half? No, of course not. That is uh that's silly. I'm gonna go Bills plus nine. Buffalo gets it done, but I nine points is way too much. All right, Ryan. So for our circo, we got Cleveland minus two and a half. <laughs> Just real quick, can you hit the breaking news sound? Sure. Uh, I've been, I'm looking at, uh, you know, my, my win bet account over here and I I'm realizing I'm already down on eight sides this week. <laughs> Thank you for well, oh my God. let's fucking go. Hashtag digits only. So Cleveland minus two and a half, Arizona minus two Pittsburgh plus three and a half Cincy plus one and a half. I'm down on all those four. And then I think we gotta, we gotta put in Atlanta plus three. I don't have Atlanta as one of the things in there. I got to get that in there. Yeah. I'm down on eight sides and Atlanta is not one of them. Let's oh. go. Yeah, let's add that. All right. And uh, I think for our uh, win bet or be the bet with win, which you can exclusively get on the win betting app, I think we keep it simple and just do a Washington Atlanta money line parlay. Does that get us to plus 500, Ryan? Washington, Atlanta, money line, money line parlay. It should. We could add in Cincy if you want, or Pittsburgh plus three and a half. That's Thursday though. You, you want? Oh, you're right. You want to include so some. Washington, Atlanta, Cincy. That'll get us over there. All on the money line. That will be our win bet, and that feels pretty good. If you can pull up a number, Ryan, while while you're doing that, I'm reminding the listeners: make sure you subscribe. On Apple Podcasts, leave a nice rating review for your chance to win free gear, aka merch Monday. Tweet out the winners every Monday at Gambling Podcast. Subscribe on the YouTube channel and turn on the alerts so that uh, you never miss when we go live. So you can get into the chat. So you can be like Colby is my dad 420. 
um, saying, Sean, is this a Seahawks podcast? Please remove me from your emergency contacts. <laughs> is that worse than attacking the entire restaurant industry? I know the I know everyone's under staff, and uh, I, you know I take it easy on the on the staff, and I know you guys are going through a lot. It's uh, Corona season's been tough on everyone, so waitresses, waiters, bartenders, you have my full support, and uh, I, unlike my co-host here, so I'm sorry. Thank you for participating. In Not this hard to show up to work every goddamn day and do a good job <laughs> with a smile on your face. That's gonna wow. pay monster. Uh, well, hundred dollar bet will pay you one thousand ninety dollars. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Fucking Giants are gonna win this weekend, Sean. Kramer, let it ride.